Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for an all new Incredible podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the brand new series, The Incredible Pole Farm, airing on Nagia Wild January 6th at 10 p.m., streaming on January 7th on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. We're so excited about this, and we're so excited that you're joining us today. I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, It's my beautiful wife, Beth Pohl. Say hello, Beth. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to talk about the, really, the genesis of this series. And Beth, what did you think when I came to you and said that I wanted to start a farm here at the property what did i think um um that's probably what i thought um a farm okay we're gonna have a farm this genesis out of uh covid it was 2020 um i believe the spring around march and everything had just shut down and we started talking. We had a lot of free time. We were talking about kind of projects and what we were going to do with our free time. Started talking about the shortages that were going on at the grocery stores. When you went to the grocery stores and you looked at the shelves and, you know, the shelves were half empty. And we discussed like how great it would be with the land that we have here to be able to grow and support some of our own food. And from there, it kind of just continued to steamroll, right, Beth? It did. It did. And at that point, too, we had a baby who was starting to grow up a little bit. And I think you were looking at Abigail and thinking about the experiences that you had had as a child growing up uh, in the country and having livestock and really having a farm experience and looking at her and contemplating how you were going to maybe share some of that with her. Yeah. So, I mean, it really became sprung out of this idea of um, wanting to provide for the family and having our uh, basically cutting the middleman out and growing our own food and being our own food source. Um, But then, you know, we began talking about other benefits like with our two children and the wanting them to grow up with animals. I mean, we had the dogs and cats, but Farm animals and and having that hobby farm is such a responsibility for kids and such an opportunity for them to be able to take care of the animals, to to get more involved, to have the resources like with the uh, sheep and cows to be able for the kids to take animals to 4-H. It, it definitely became like part of the thought process is like we really want our kids to be exposed to this lifestyle, right, Beth? Yeah, for sure. And you kind of coupled that with this idea of leaning back into nature and where our food is coming from. It just sort of started to snowball for us in terms of the idea of what we have in terms of opportunity and what we could make it. Yeah, it's, you know, and I go back to my dad just saying all the time, you know, kids who grow up with animals make better adults. I thought about my experiences with 4-H and how they shaped me and and the lessons, the life lessons I took out of it into life. And it it made it a really easy decision to want to do this. So from there, we talked to my brother-in-law, who was also Ben, who is on the show, is a major player on the show, major factor. And we got him involved just saying like, hey, we, we want to build this farm. We need the facilities. Uh, would you be able to do something? And we started out in 2020 with a peacock aviary. And uh, I wanted a space. Beth had raised the peacocks. I don't know if you saw that episode of The Incredible Dr. Pole. But on The Incredible Dr. Pole, we hatched some peacocks and we had them in our a bird barn, but the bird barn didn't have a spot for these peacocks to go outside. And so we really wanted to give them an outdoor space. 
Plus, my other peacock pen was starting to get overflowing, had too many males, had too many peacocks in it. So by doing this, we'd be able to move more of the peacocks over. So we built the aviary and it just kind of like it started out. We're going to build an aviary. And then it was like, well, we're going to build a 24 by 17 aviary. And oh, let's make it 17 feet tall and put a tree in the middle of it. And it just kind of like kept expanding. And then, you know, it was like, oh, well, while we have an aviary, let's capture the rain and have a water tower. And then we can't do a water tower. Let's do a water tower that looks like an old steam tank, like the old fashioned Western water towers and, you know, do a wood exterior tin roof. And let's let's put it like, you know, 2000 gallon water tower and hoist it up 10 feet in the air. So it, it kept on getting more complicated. And I'm sure at that point you're like, what did I get myself into? Well, I mean, the only thing I wanted was recaptured rainwater off of this aviary that you guys were building. And so I think that was sort of the leverage point into this whole other concept. Um, I would have been happy with a rain barrel uh, that could have just collected the water as it ran off. But turns out the water tower is actually really useful because of the volume of water that it can hold um, and the ability then to feed that rainwater both to the cows, use it in the garden, and to feed it back to the, the peacocks. And for cleaning, too, it's pretty handy. It was a really big jump from, like, let's build a little aviary to suddenly it's a massive aviary off the side of the building that collects rainwater and connects to a, ra- a water tower. It, it was a feat of your imagination, I think. And it looks spectacular. I just got to say, it looks spectacular. But we we recorded that into a for for a sizzle or a sales tape, um, and then I kind of took about a year um, of thought on on how to how this show, how we could accomplish this show, um, from like just purely a uh, development standpoint of a TV show. You know, I was really concerned about whether doing a farm would be enough. And it wasn't until Clarkson's Farm came out on Amazon and I saw Clarkson's Farm. And I'll give full credit to Jeremy Clarkson that he 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 pulled off making farming entertaining. And it gave me the confidence to say, you know what? Farming can be enough. That's enough there for a TV show. We should just focus on the farm. We shouldn't, you know, try to make this, uh, tr- you know, more of an company scene, like travel around to farmers or have farmers come here. Let's just focus on us farming and, and building this farm and doing what we're doing. And and that kind of just rolled into the series and, and that we took it to Nat Geo Wild and they really loved it. And uh, it, it just kind of kept on going from there. Yeah, but during that time that you were really thinking about the farm, we were also looking at what animals we would bring in, how we would grow it, what the expansion would look like, and what we were going to be able to handle and take care of within the scope of our capabilities. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's crazy to think that this process from when we first came up with the idea of like doing a farm and then saying like oh well you know we could probably record it and maybe sell it as a as a series of us doing this farm and and then and the whole time and then recording the show and four years later here we are we're finally airing the show it it went from genesis to to complete execution to on air in four years which is is not normal, um, but uh, it's it it does it did make for being more mature, more ready for this process. And I think that whole initial time, my head was still trying to wrap around the idea of Charles wants a farm. Charles wants a farm. Okay, we're gonna have a farm. What does that mean for me? What does that look like for us? And as I finally came to terms with the idea of okay, we're going to have a farm. Then he's at that point reached the decision of like, I think I can share this with people in a way that they're going to love. And like, so now you don't just want to farm, but you want a farm that we're going to film. And so all of these trials and tribulations and foibles and like crazy things that happen, you want to capture to share with everybody. And he's like, yes, that's what I'd like to do. So, okay. So then I spent some time wrapping my head around that. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are four years later. But it's, you know, it was um, 
we we did do a year of filming from start to finish because it took uh you know we wanted to capture the seasons and we were starting kind of um we did a little bit of filming in the spring but then we we full-time filmed in the summer so we went spring to spring so that took a year and then it took several months to edit all that together and so um a year's worth of footage so it it really took two years um from the start of filming to to when it's going to air so we we really got to see uh our kids grow up on screen it's pretty crazy when you watch this first episode and you see abigail and she's so tiny and now she's like a little girl like no no longer a toddler but a little girl how how is that for you well, I think that farming reframes your, your brain. Um, it's, it's unbelievable to look back and see how quickly she's grown. But at the same time, your dad, for instance, at the clinic, thinks about things appointment to appointment, day to day, right? We're booked this week. It's a busy week. It's a busy day. It's a busy morning of appointments. I think with farming, it's shown me to look at things in a very different uh, time path. It's not like, okay, we're going to have you know six appointments in the morning it's like okay it's spring we're going to prep the garden or we're going to get ready for the bees and it's more project based and um we're looking at time from a very different standpoint and i think that the filming and the process to go through that filming reflects that right you just can't go and do all these things in a six or eight week period it, it takes a duration of time to allow the sheep's wool to grow for the bees to uh, work in their hives for the crops to grow and it's funny because on a day-to-day -day basis when we look at the kids we don't see that growth but when you look at it through the lens of what we just did six or eight months ago They've grown, both the kids have grown so much, and it's true. Like Abigail, when we started filming, was Silas's age, and Silas was just a baby. And now she's just turning into a little girl, and he's doing all of the mobile things that she was doing. And um, the cool thing is, is that th we're able to share the process that we're going through with building the farm with the kids as they're growing. And so we're all really growing and changing together. It's, it's really like uh, everything unto its season right like turn turn and yeah yeah it yeah. is it's like a time for planning a time for the animals to get time to cut hay a time for animals yeah. to get sheared you know a time for babies um but uh you don't think about life that yeah, way we, well terms, to, until you start farming <laughs> and then you do think about it right. that way one of the one of the crazy things is that for me that i wasn't expecting was you know, I, I remember we, I grew up on a hobby farm. We had all kinds of animals. We had cows, we had goats, we had sheep, we had uh, chickens and geese. Um, but, you know, as a kid, I had the responsibility of feeding the animals and, you know, doing different things, helping with hay, you know, um, helping with fences when my dad needed to repair fences. But it wasn't like I was in charge of it like you know responsible for it like my dad was and when you're responsible for this farm there's so much to do um and some people might say like oh gee a lot of my friends from california were like are you farming like what what is wrong with you why are you farming and i just tell them i have never slept a more peaceful night of sleep than i'm wor when i'm working on the farm all day i mean you just sleep fantastic you wake up refreshed it was some of the most hard work that i've done but the most fun i've had doing that work and then to be able to do it with ben your brother bringing him onto the project having him here experiencing it with us um getting more into farming than i ever think he, he thought he was going to um, and really enjoying it. it. It was one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. And I'm so excited that we did it. I'm so excited that we have it. And I'm excited to for everyone to see what the, the process was, the evolution of us going through this farm. So Charles, as we worked on this farm and we started, was there ever a point at which 
you stopped and you said, what am I doing? This isn't going well. Things aren't working. Where there was a moment where you really struggled with the idea of what we were trying to accomplish and whether it was attainable. I don't think that there was ever a moment in the farming where I felt defeated. I think there were moments in the filming where I felt defeated. Um, and, you know, just wondering about how this was going to turn out or, you know, all the drama that goes on with doing a new show and, and figuring out how, how to shoot it and, you know, how, how to get through it all. Um, meeting the deadlines that we had to do for production on top of the deadlines for farming. That was, that was super challenging. And, and there were moments where I felt like really kind of defeated some nights um, on that. Um, but the actual farming, there were some challenges in the planting where I was really worried about it that I like really made me nervous when we were planting the hay. Um, but aside from that, I don't think there was anything that we did in farming where I was just like defeated. There were a lot of things that went wrong, a lot of life lessons, but you just kind of take the punches and roll with them. Yeah. And so you think the planting was the, the most difficult element for you in terms of this whole process? I don't think it was the most difficult element. I think it was the thing that I was least confident about. And, th and I think it was the thing that we're, where the, the train started going off the rails the most, really. I mean, there were other things that happened, but some of those, you know, are the known unknowns, if you will, where you know that there's going to be those things that pop up. Um, but with the planning, it, it went beyond the known unknowns. It went just into the completely unknowns. And so those, those were the moments where I was worried that we had gotten in over our head and, and we were going to not meet our deadlines. But um, that was really early on and, and we did it. And to tell you the truth, I was never really defeated. Um, there were moments with the, the process of putting a show together where I was kind of like, you get to the like, is this going to fall apart? I mean, there were many moments like that with the filming. I was worried. I mean, I didn't know if you could grow anything. I have this terrible, I have had this terrible black thumb. I kill practically every house plant I've ever had. You know this. It's not a surprise to you. I bring home a beautiful plant from the store. And then somewhere between that moment and the next 12 months, the plant has died because I just can't seem to keep them alive. And since we've had kids, which was, by the way, terrifying, the whole idea of like, now I have to keep it alive. This is like so much more important and special than a house plant. Right. Like it's, it's I'm just being honest. I was worried about that. My track record was not good there too for with house baby house plant babies. And so interestingly enough, since we've had the kids um, who are well and healthy, uh, my plants have actually been doing a lot better, too. But when you've you been better at nurturing, I've I'm, gotten more nurturing. I'm better at nurturing, apparently, yes. But I admit, I looked out at that hayfield and I had that same sense of onks that I've always had when I would get a new house plant and I was so happy about it. And then inevitably, I would somehow fail with it. And as I looked out that field and all of the time and effort that you guys were putting into it to be able to plant it and just prepare the soil and then the seed goes in and all I can think of is this deja vu of all the house plants that I've killed and so I was feeling very anxious for you in that whole process so I'm actually glad I didn't tell you because it sounds like you were most anxious on that part as well yeah I wasn't anxious once we got the crop <laughs> in I knew it was going to grow to tell you the truth it's, I didn't <laughs> yeah grass is like grass is really hard not to kill I'm just saying it's <laughs> It's pretty hard to kill grass, but yeah, no, that was, uh, that was definitely the, the one that, that was, I was most tripped up on. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible what having shared visions and shared goals can be, um, when you've got individuals who are willing to come together and work hard to make it happen. And Ben was just such an integral part in that. Obviously, Charles, you had such fantastic ideas, um, but Ben was able to bring some of the more technical elements, particularly with building these hardscapes. Your dad was a huge piece when it came to the care and guiding on how these structures should look and how we take care of these animals. And so it's really been a family process.
process to be able to build this farm and, and get it off the ground. A pole family farm. That's what it is. An incredible pole farm. And it it really was uh, a credible process. It was incredible um, to to see it, what you could accomplish working together. I'm really excited about sharing it with everybody. And I hope that the audience will enjoy it as much as we had enjoyed making it. And you can watch The Incredible Pole Farm on Natchea Wild January 6th at 10 p.m. and stream it on January 7th on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. We really appreciate you joining us today for this incredible pollcast. And we'll be back on January 7th with an all-new pollcast uh, talking about episodes one and two. So look forward uh, to that and tune in to the next pollcast dropping on January 7th. Until then, thank you, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon.